We are back with the Mayor's Budget Improvement Discussions. Uh, we're going to hear from Michelle Donegan on the Emergency Communications Center here in a second. I uh, just want to recognize that we have Council Member John Cooper with us. I know that you may have brought some folks, so I'll let you introduce them here in a second. Just want to remind the viewers at home that we have more requests for funds than we actually have available revenue. So at the end of the day, we'll make the best decision on the allocation of those dollars, uh, dependent on what the taxpayers of Davidson County need. So. Michelle, always great to see you. Over to you, we'll talk about your operating budget and then your capital budget request and yes, introduce your folks. Thank you very, very much. Um, first of all, I'll do my introductions. I have Mr. Dwayne Vance. He is our um, finance manager. And then on my left, I have Angie Milligan. She's assistant director over our operations. And in the back here, we have Michelle Peterson. She is assistant director over support. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, have with the um, ECD board, Mr. Mark Lanham, and he is their business manager if we have any questions for them. Great. Why don't you kick us off with your uh, operating budget requests? I will do that. Um, first, I do want to take the time to say thank you for your time, and thank you for always being so supportive of, now I can say, the Department of Emergency Communications. Yes, you can. Uh, <laughs> which was a wonderful accomplishment for, for last year. Um, to get right in, of course, a lot of our um, requests are focused around the growth of our city because of the service that we do, we do provide. Um, first of all, it's we're asking for six FD, FTEs total. Um, the first is going to be um, just the starter position for a dispatcher call taker. We're asking for three FTEs in that area. That would be um, at a cost of 189300 The reason we're asking for that is, of course, with the growth of our city, um, and that just includes the residents we have, the tourism we have, the workforce that we have here. Our call volume, as previous years, it continues to grow. The trend is each fiscal year we see an increase. Last year we were at uh, 1 million and 700 and some change calls. This year we're already at um, 1 million 100 and some. Wait, okay, so yes. do this as a, is that year-to-year -year comparison wait so we're doing a fiscal year comparison okay, right. July to July okay so that's what these <clears throat> numbers represent okay got it and so <clears throat> just from the increase from FY 15 to 16 was a 21 percent so wow. we feel very confident and we when we say we're trending to increase each year and of course our primary responsibility is to be there to answer that 911 call that that's our primary function to ensure that we're we're getting the police fire or medical um, response that's needed to our citizens what we're hoping for is um, our right now the the Nina it's the National Emergency Number Association they recommend a 10 minute a 10 second <laughs> that would be a very long Say, time wow. <laughs> <laughs> that would be long 10 seconds yeah, yeah, yeah. yes no sir lies. 10 minutes <laughs> not a good idea though no, not a good idea 10 second answer time on 911 and right now we're trending at 13.1 so we know that if we can add more people in the seats to answer those calls we're going to be able to provide the service that we need to the to the community of David and county and that would give us actually one more additional person per shift because we are 24 7 and we have the three individual shifts so would that would those additional um, FTEs take that 13.1 down to 10 that's certainly our hope okay um, and some other things we're asking for can also help to, okay. to drop that number as well when you look at our the next um, item is to create a training instructor that will be one FTE the cost of that would be at 80,000 the reason um, we're requesting this is because we are, in fact, uh, hiring very aggressively. We have been last year, and we're going to continue that this year. We have scheduled four dispatch classes, and a call taker class takes about six weeks. So if you have four of those, you're looking at 24 weeks that are dedicated to training that person in the call taking um, field. Besides that, after they after a new call taker goes out and they do their rotation, then they spend two more weeks in the classroom that involves dispatching class. So you add that two weeks times these four classes. And in addition, we also have 20 plus hours of in-service training that we have every year for all of our employees. We do a fire class that's very important that we have. And um, we also 
when you include those trainings, we aren't able with one trainer, we currently have one trainer, we aren't able to overlap those disciplines in training. We have to wait till one's completed to start another. So what we need is to be able to run concurrently different training classes to ensure we're where we need to be with our various um, levels of performance. And, and, and Michelle, what kind of turnover do you have right now? What's your attrition rate? The attrition rate, Right now, we, we did a quick calculation and it, it gave us 11%. We're going to recalculate that because I think we're probably going to be somewhat higher than that. If you look at the last nine years, our lowest has been 11 and our highest has been 27. So it's got to be an incredibly stressful job. Absolutely, so. it is. The men and women um, at ECC have a very stressful, very stressful job. And um, I'm proud to, of the work that they're able to do under that stress. While it is very stressful, it's also very rewarding. Sure. So that training uh, instructor would just uh, allow us to do more disciplines at one time and would certainly be helpful to us. And then when we get to a point to where we can reduce that um, from four classes a year, that's my goal is certainly to get to where that, that won't be necessary to, because I hope all we're doing is filling our attrition at that time. But then we could take that extra training person and the training we do, we can improve upon it. We do really great training now, but why aren't we elite? We have to ensure we're certainly keeping up with all the trends and technology to be sure we're at the top of our game all the time. Sure. The other thing that kind of it just all grows together is to create a new supervisor position in operations. And, and that comes with, fortunately, we have been very um, uh, lucky. You've recognized the need for our additional personnel last year. You gave us five more. Um, since 2014, we have increased overall as, as the position of call taker or dispatcher. However, we haven't in the supervision. Our span of control right now is probably 10 to 13 on various days, and we, we certainly recognize the NIMS recommendation of three to seven. So what we'd like is to add one more supervisor in there to divert, disperse the number of reports that they have um, to ensure that we have the supervisors who are there and available on the floor for those call takers or dispatchers if there's a critical call that they just need some guidance on. Um, if they encounter a problem, if they need direction, if we have to combine uh, various things, it's important that we have that supervisor available. And we, we can certainly have more than one incident going on at a time. Sure. Okay. Um, the next in, um, line will be for an HR assistant. That's uh, one FTE position at a cost of $51,500. We do have one HR professional now, but with the extra aggressive hiring that we have been doing, um, just to, it's, it's more of adjusting that workload that we have. We have, we really wanna use this new FTE to do the duties of processing for the new hires. Um, there is a lot of work involved in that, in the background and the scheduling. We also want to utilize them throughout that recruitment process. Um, we'll be able to use them in their orientations, et cetera, while our current HR professional that we have now can focus on those things like um, looking at our job descriptions, grievances, disciplinary hearings, interviews, exit interviews. We have more than enough work um, to, for both of them to stay extremely busy. But as our, as our organization has continued to grow, we just have continued with one person. So that second would be a great addition to our staff. And, and what, what kind of support do you get from Metro HR? As far as questions, they're wonderful to us. Um, we're able to go with them. We operate on our own, so you, but we can so always you do all of your own assistance. hiring. Absolutely, all of that. So Everything is done completely in house. Yes, that's true. Um, with our fire training line, um, we're asking for thirty-six thousand seven hundred dollars. What that would do is allow us to train ten more employees in fire training. Oh, and what is fire training, and why is that important? It's very important in that when we have um, a new employee. They're trained to do call taking and dispatching. That training takes actually one full year before they're truly out on their own and being productive as, a, as an employee on their own. What happens then, they do that, they're an ET1, then they become an ET2 after their training. The next process is an ET3. People um, who work at ECC that are in that level of ET3, they're ready to advance their skill set to fire dispatch. 
That's a whole discipline so fire that's is different. a whole different than if I'm coming in with a, a police or a um, request. Absolutely. So. In the beginning, they can call take and they can dispatch police. Got that's it. what they that's do here, it. one, two, and three. Then, then we feel like and they're able and they have the ability and we teach them the skill set to dispatch on fire, which is and, totally and, independent. And why is that different than dispatch? Why, if I, the viewer at home, why would I think, why is that different? Well, it's very different in dispatching calls for service. We also have various protocols that are important for fire as well as um, uh, uh, fire and medical protocols that we use. Um, the fire, we work as a team. Um, it's a four dispatcher team. I see. And then there's various levels within that fire dispatch that each one has the responsibility for. And so what we would like is, now because someone is fire trained doesn't mean they also do not spend time call taking, they sure. spend time police, and they also have fire. But we have to ensure that we have that healthy balance to ensure we have all disciplines covered. We can't have a shift come in and we do not have adequate fire personnel to work the fire radios. Got so it. what we are hoping for is our long-term goal is to end up with 75 fire personnel trained, that's 25 per shift. So even if there's a crisis, we feel confident that we would always be able to cover the fire radios without bringing in overtime um, or having to you know, hold individuals over into the next shift. Got it, okay. And that brings us to special events. Um, much like I know you've talked with the police department and they've done a lot of explanation on that. We just began in 2015, Thank you. Uh, receiving funds to, to fund our special events. We do not take call takers or dispatchers off the floor to assist in that. We take, we pay overtime dollars for that. Um, in FY14, we did 136 events. FY15, 206. Last year, 255. And this year, we certainly anticipate being over 300 with the growth of our city and the events that we have. But we just want to ensure that we always have the call takers um, that are there and the dispatchers to respond to our city's needs. And then we also want to be able to have the overtime dollars to ensure that we have the people available to help on those special events. So let me just make sure I'm clear. So on a special event component, if you know that there's a special event, you staff up at the facility to ensure that if there are additional calls coming regarding that special event, that there's availability to take that. Absolutely, that right? they are dedicated solely to that special event, okay. and they may be at our facility, or we also could have the ability to go to them. Sometimes it's according added. to the size yeah, of the right. event. Like a, like a marathon or something like that. You might be We would be on scene. on scene, that's right. correct. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So that'll wrap up the operational portion. Um, we do have a capital request this year that's so near and dear we to head my there, heart. Any questions okay. on the operation? <laughs> any questions on the operation? Let's talk about your capital request. Yes, ma'am. Um, we have a, a capital request of $36 million. It's for a new facility. We would like, um, we're looking at it as a critical public safety complex. Um, we would love to see that it could be a multi-use complex with multiple functions. Um, our building alone certainly would house us, um, OEM, the possibility of the hub could also um, be housed within that facility. And the additional space on, on a property, if we could find, could certainly be an opportunity for that number nine police precinct as well to make it a multi-use complex. What we did, we have worked with General Services to come up with this 36 million figure. We worked with them previously in 2014. They reached out to a consultant who did a plan for a facility for us at that time. So we met with General Services. We went over that plan, um, considered for escalation as well in the price. And right now for the facility itself, it was um, priced at 600 a square foot, $600 a square foot for a 60,000 foot facility. The reason that we need this new facility. Do I get to live there too? <laughs> <laughs> you know, during some events, we do live there. <laughs> so, and, and that that's just a constructive facility. There's right, going to be just equipment charges. It's going to be basic yeah, FFE okay. that's right. included in that at this time. That's just okay. the basic. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. We would know a lot more if we knew a site location. Right. We could. We sure. could we would know a better and we've been figure. working to try to find a location so it's in process just don't have it yet that's now. correct sir yes sir we have been looking but a new facility would certainly give us the proper size that we need um the layout some uh, ada and Michelle, talk about the layout for a second because i think that's important um with the current layout of the facility and how that 
endangers oftentimes potentially. Correct, correct. The, the facility we're in now is, it was built in the 80s, early 80s. It's a two-story facility, and, and when it was built, it was adequate. The problem is we've certainly outgrown it. Um, at one time, the police operation was on the bottom and the fire department was up top. As time grew and precincts grew, um, it has changed to now the entire dispatch operation, fire and police, and a couple of call takers, call, call taking stations are on the first level. All our call takers are upstairs on the second level. And that's not the best layout for an emergency communication center. We all need to be on the same level where we all have that same communication and we can visually see each other as well as communicate via radios and phones. Because otherwise you're running up and down stairs. Should we have an outage, which we have not had that often at all but when it does happen even if it's for a 15 minute span we can still take the calls we can still get them dispatched but we're physically running up and down stairs with pieces of paper <coughs> up and down and that's that's not the best case scenario and time is of essence when Sorry. it's an emergency yeah. I mean, a few months ago mayor um, michelle and several others Talia was scheduled to come, but couldn't find it. Um, went out to Williamson County. I had to get. I had just had to say that. <laughs> went out to <laughs> saw the new facility. Went out to Williamson <laughs> County to, to find the uh, to view their facility. And it, I mean, it's uh, you compare theirs to ours. It's yeah. um, well, you can't. Just you can't quite amazing. Yeah. You really quite can't amazing. compare the two. And I, I mean, from yeah. a public safety aspect, yeah. you know, this is long past due. I, I mean, it, just a little point. I was actually on the originals architectural selection committee for the existing site they're on so top like of the, the hill was at the, at the police yeah, uh, yeah. Meeting. you so were there, I was there. there. Yeah. so that was yeah, you know back in the late ago. 70s early 80s when that was selected and and so it is a uh, it's an old it's, it's an, a very old facility technology I mean, just, things have changed in the 30 yes. years yes yeah. it's been built. And an additional bonus to that um, it can remain as our backup center yeah, which would sure. be a great um, it's a great location and, and it'll work for and that for would what remove us of that that? The Harding facility that we use as the backup now. It absolutely will. We're yeah. renting that facility. Right. There's for, some pressure to get out of there too, in yes there. Sir. So it's, yes this sir. Is, it would serve so a couple purposes. Yeah. Do that too. That's correct. Well, I had the opportunity to be over there when we were having the um, tornado warnings a couple of, about two weeks ago, and it's just yes, you're, everybody over there does an amazing job um, on all levels, but it is a, an, a definitely an antiquated and outdated facility that needs um, a, a much better work environment. Yes, ma'am. For the folks who come to work every day. Yeah. All right. So that's it for us. Anything for us? Else? Uh, I have a question just because yes, you're sitting back there and I want them to be very uncomfortable. Who Would the uh, ECD be willing to uh, assist us in uh, funding this facility? <laughs> I do. I do. O only if the answer is yes, Only if the answer is yes. I'm sure the board would be open now. Uh, to fund any anything that they can, we sure. just have to look to see what, right. you know, what, what what needs to go in there and so forth. But in the past, we've always funded the, the we've equipment, funded yeah. assisted but, with yeah. furniture, things like that. We mm -hmm. we have an interlocal agreement with the city at this point in time where, and it's worked very well. Where the city always provides the facility and they pay the salaries, and so we fund most of all the, the other. Uh, yeah, things travel, that training, the, some of the other stuff. Yeah, the equipment, exactly. the maintenance, uh, telephone services, uh, you know, See general you operating had, expenses like supplies and uniforms. I had to have like you that. on record right. as supporting that. Which, well, the, the board, I mean, they, they've the board has, themselves, and I mean, they're open to this. You might domain. explain what, what the, 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 right. the emergency right. community right. the district, what the board is, because a lot of people I think don't that's really exactly understand good point. that. Yes, the, the emergency communications district, is it's an independent uh, government entity that was put in place to enhance 911 services. Uh, it's, it's regulated by the state of Tennessee. Uh, uh, there's a nine-member board of directors uh, that sit on the board. Uh, those members are appointed by the mayor's office. Uh, we receive funding from the state of Tennessee uh, for this 911 surcharge fee that's applied to any, any telephone or any, any device that uh, can call 911, whether it be landline, uh, cellular, uh, IP-based. Uh, and what we do is uh, we... This year, I think we're going to take in about 6.8 million uh, uh, in funding, and we we turn around and, and, and funnel that money back into the 911 center for, yeah. for the things that they need. We work very closely with their staff, and uh, you know, good. Good. just curious with everybody, everybody using mobile devices now. Is, is your funding pretty level? Is it is it? Uh, yes, it, it used to be that we, that each each county set their own mm -hmm. uh, surcharge fee uh, back in 2015. 
the state, state decided state to do state. their own thing where, I mean, Everybody's uh, the same. It, yeah, they take in all, the, all the, uh, the fees from the various telephone service providers now and they distribute that back to, to the various counties based on a formula, you know, mm -hmm. that consists of population and things like that. Um, so, so it's, it's, you know, we, we, we used to, to change that rate if we felt the need. Uh, but now, you know, it's just, just, just pretty flat. much consistent as to what the state's bringing in. And right now, it, it, it's set at, a, I think, $1.16 for each, each device uh, so that can could, call 911. That's not one of the fees so. we get increased to help fund right. transit. <laughs> <laughs> right. So unless Fairly the state not. starts bringing in more money, uh, you know, we're, we're I mean, pretty we much really at the level. I really do appreciate you all Absolutely. supporting us. They've been very supportive, yeah. Very significant. I mean, I've been, to, I've been to those meetings, too. Yeah. You're reading <laughs> We did the, the, the radio equipment. Uh, oh, yeah, that's yeah. another yeah. thing. I mean, that was a, that was a that huge expense there. That was a huge expense there. which you agreed to fund over a several-year ten, period. Ten-year period. Yeah. We're yeah. into year six right Thank now. Thank you. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. So it's been a, a great partner for the system. Yeah. Yes. In, any other questions? No. Before we... Before we say this thank you, Michelle. First, this is the first time you've been asked to come up with a budget here in a long time. Larry, I think Twala tried to get me on the spot last year. I had him up here last year. I couldn't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I went easy on you when I was finance director. Did you remember that, who the nice guy she was? was on record. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate you. Thank He's you. a good partner. Thank you. So if I may say, he is a wonderful, the ECD he board is. is a wonderful partner for us, absolutely. And and while everyone I brought with us, we, we work real hard over there to, to ensure the citizens get, but it's not us that do it. It's certainly those men and women that are back there mm -hmm. at that center answering those calls and dispatching those first right. responders that make it a success. Well, please tell them all thank you for yes, us. Yes, ma'am. Appreciate I you. I will. All right, y'all. Thanks. Have a great rest thank of your day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.